John, let's be honest, and I'm going to continue to say this. These two, though, are leaps and bounds above the rest. Right now. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Right now. I agree. That's, that goes with any. Like, one, one fighter can lose, and then they, they may disappear. We've seen guys sure. that were on the top of the food chain, and they'll fall off because confidence is key. And we can't say, I cannot say that enough. Big John and I have been saying this for the longest time. Confidence is the thing that will get you through not just fights, but in life. You need to make sure that you are 100% confident in everything you do. Believe in yourself. Charles Oliveira believes in himself. Islam Makachev believes in himself. These top guys in the, in the top five, top eight, top ten, they all believe in themselves. Gamrot tonight believed in himself. You know, Darius believed in himself. All of these guys, they, they step in that cage. They believe in themselves. It's after, it's what they do after that defines what they, who they are and what they, and how great they can be. How far they're going to go. And just, I'm going to be on how far they're going to go. Yeah. John, I, I could sit up here and, and gloat and do all the other things, but look, there, the biggest thing is this. And I'm going to continue to say this over and over again. I'm sure I said this about Habib when he fought Justin Gaethje. I said, people don't realize the Dagestani, the Sambo style of wrestling in which is learned from Habib's dad. That style of what they do and That's what right. they are good at, it best it benefits them. You've seen we've seen countless Sambo guys come in. We just saw I just watched one um last night uh, go against um one of the Rulato brothers, Cade. He didn't look that good. That guy got submitted by a jiu-jitsu guy. Sure. That's my point. My point is is that look, Sambo guys are great, but they're great with striking. They're not just hundred percent submission wise. Cade Rutulo is one of the greatest submission experts to ever come into the, into the game. But Islam Makachev is built different. Habib is built different. Charles is a great jiu-jitsu guy, a great fighter. But the moments come when they're, they're separated at certain points. His father left a legacy with the guys that he has helped build. And he and Habib has been very clear about this, that Islam was always like his number one student outside of him. And they have been best friends. Since they were young, young kids, they love each other. They care for each other. They are all about helping each other grow. And you see, and I saw, and I stayed a little bit and watched because I was at a friend's house watching, uh, watching the uh, event. And I said, you could just see just that feeling that Habib had when he gave Islam a hug. And then it's just like, this is, it's, it's complete. It's not completely over yet. Just so everyone <laughs> understands it's complete in what the, 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 the dream was, but. Habib now has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders to do what his father did. Create your own champions. Islam may be champion because Habib helped him get the rest of the way, but his dad built him. And I think that Habib is going to take that to on his shoulders now. You should expect that next generation of fighters to come like as if it was from his dad. And I get nothing but respect to Habib, nothing but respect from Javier Mendez. That stand-up, Islam stand-up never looked that good. No. It looked good. Oh, look great. It never looked that good. That first left hand that he, that he hit him with, man, it hurt him bad. Everyone, again, a lot of people said that Charles going to outstrike him out and knock him out. I, I would have, I would have probably have agreed, agreed. But the way that I went about it though was if Charles was concerned about the takedown, you understand more than anyone because you've been in the cage with the it's best fighters in the world, all across to be the effective world. Effective in the stand up. Because that split second of hesitation. That's right. Is he shooting when his arms move, when his elbows leave his ribs? That split second of hesitation against the world class athlete that Islam Akachev is, is all you need to get the takedown, to land the shot, to do whatever it is you need to do that he was thinking about doing. And that's all it took. That, those shots that Islam, that, uh, Charles took, it was because for a split second he was thinking about the takedown. When he moved and he flinched, when he fainted, was he going to try to take me down? Was he low on his level? Was he trying to get to the underhooks? I got nothing but respect for Charles, and I've always had nothing but respect for Charles. I've loved Charles as a fighter since he was at 145. I, I've, I've said this. I know people didn't hear it because all they heard was me being a homer to, to, to my boy. But I, I want to, I want, like I said, I want to remind people, I will continue to be a homer for everyone that trains out of AK for the life of AK's standing of being a gym. And I, even if I've never met the guy or trained with the guy, I will be that way. Javier Mendez is, is I would say almost, he's, I would say he's like a, a second father to me. Someone that kind of was there for me a lot 
Now, look, we've separated, like, you know, as fighting careers and trainers sure. got to continue to build their, their, their athletes. We're not as close as we used to be. But when I see them, it's all nothing but love. Same thing with Bob Cook when he's my, he's my manager. He's been my manager since I was 19 years old. I've never had another manager. It's just one. Every time I see him, it's hugs. I love you. You're my, ma- you're my guy. Like, that's the thing. Um, but, and John, you've seen how I am with people, man. The people that I'm close with, this is how I am. And I care for them a lot. I care for Islam. Care for podcast, Dave. Care for you. You know, I get a little emotional sometimes, a little teary eyed, but like it's important to me to, to have people like this that I really care for that I've grown up with. Luke Rockhold, when he fought Paulo Costa, same thing, man. I'm a fucking wreck when my boys are fighting. And, and I think that's what yes, makes it. You are. Makes me who I am. <laughs> I'm a wreck, man. I'm a wreck. a wreck. It is a lot easier to watch or to fight your own fight when you're in there than it is to watch your friends fight. And if anyone tells you different, they're lying. And then maybe they're not as close to your being a friend to you as they, they say they are. Well, this, this is why I we, can't. This is why we always say clinch be, up. being that trainer is the worst oh, position the to worst, be in. Because it, it doesn't matter what you did. If the fighter goes out there and is doing great, yeah, it's great. But as soon as the fighter's not doing anything that you said and things are going bad, it's there's nothing you can do. You can try to snap them out of it, but there's nothing you can do. And you're just watching someone that you care about. I mean, you truly care about. Yeah. Go out and just take punishment, not be successful, and it's brutal. It's just a terrible experience. I spent the last 10, I'd say the last eight maybe years of my career training with not, like a majority of with Islam, Habib, and then little Umar came along. Like little, I, can't, I, I spent a, a majority, and then I realized how good they were. I spent the majority towards the end of my career training with them specifically. Now I had other guys, Thomas Dion's. He was my main, probably one of my main sparring partners. So good on the feet, so dynamic, just good, uh, Sancho like takedown guy. But then you mix him with Habib, you mix him with, you know, Islam, you mix him with other guys that Islam and Habib had brought. A little Umar, I'd mess with him around a little bit, you know, and spar with him. It's just, you you build a relationship with fighters that you train with, and I'm a ride or die kind of guy when it comes to my boys. And I don't know. It just I knew that he po- he possessed all the threats that I've seen Charles break to at 145. Now he didn't. Charles didn't break here. This I, and I said this. I said this. I said if Islam's gonna catch him, he's gonna catch him with a couple things. The side choke being one of them. The Kimura, Kimura. being the other, and and a potential yeah. leg lock. But to me, it was always, it was always the Kimura or the side choke. He is, he gets to that position, whether he's in half guard, a full side control, it doesn't matter. He gets there and it's a different type of squeeze. There's certain fighters that have that squeeze. Oh, yes. It's just a different squeeze. Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter how good of a jiu-jitsu guy you are. Like I've said for countless, Habib didn't have his, as um was didn't have as much success against top level jiu jitsu guys in training, but he still would grind on them and work them. And but when it came to like guys that got to positions, he was able to escape. I never seen him get tapped by top level black belt. Never. He I never seen him tap to that posi- to to anybody in a top level um black belt position. Islam, I had seen put them in jeopardy over and over and over again. Top level guys. I I I've seen. Islam dominate top level guys, top level jiu jitsu guys from the mount position, from side control, takedowns, foot sweeps, all of these things. So I knew that Charles was going to be in some trouble. And these guys were mainly bigger than him when Islam was training with them. So when you have guys that are bigger than you, that are top level jiu jitsu players, and you're still able to work them around, move them around, sweep them, danger, and put them in danger, make them escape, make them fight. I knew that Charles with striking was going to be a problem on the feet, but once it hit the ground, Islam was going to slow the pace down and really make him work out of that position. Let, let's take a look at this and be honest about the whole thing as we're looking at it. You have to give so much credit to Islam for putting up with a lot of pressure because he was under a ton of pressure. Yes, he was the home home favorite, but the amount of pressure that was on him, and it wasn't just the crowd. It is the pressure of Habib, but it's really the pressure of Abdulmana because it meant so much to him to make that man's dreams come to fruition, and that's what he did. 
And he was under a, a, an incredible amount of pressure in the fight, but he handled it really well. And you could see it throughout parts of the fight. Like he came out, he started off well. He landed that left hand. He looked really dominant as far as pressure in the top position. That pressure, he was stopping a lot of what Charles was trying to do. And you saw Charles just start to take and accept the guard and not worry about really looking for the submission, just trying to let time go by with it. The second round said a lot to me because there was a moment when Charles was starting to starting to get into a groove, and you could see Islam actually back off of it, reset, come out, do his thing, and you go, that's what you're looking for when you're looking at a guy as far as fight IQ, fight maturity. He's got it. You can see it. And, you know, the whole thing that you're talking about, people need to understand. Look, at Khabib took over as the coach because of his father passing. And you're right. He's going to have to come up with his own stable. But he took it upon himself as these are my dad's guys and I need to walk them through their careers like my dad was going to do. And that's why he's doing what he's doing. And, and look, hey, we've seen him how many times in that corner. I can't think of many times that he hasn't walked away with that win as far as yeah. his guy getting the win. So he's obviously doing the right thing. He's spending the time. You know, I don't, I don't know how the guy is still married because it's a different world as far as the way they do things because he's never home. And uh, you just got to give it up to Islam Makachev. We knew that how good he was. You, know, you had talked to me forever about John. You know, when you roll with him, you know. You, he's got a different feel. It is just not something that you get from other guys. And, and you know, coming from you, I knew. I said, well... We're going to see what happens, but he looked fantastic. It's not that Charles didn't come out ready to fight. He had good eyes. First time I think he's ever fought, you know, after having the LASIK surgery, so he could actually see his opponent clearly. That would be a nice thing. Did it make a difference? Thought it might. Could have been that little thing, seeing things a little clearer. Islam won on the feet. He won in the wrestling. He won in the submission game. That's why he's the lightweight champion. And I love the fact. I love what... Habib set him up with that. We want to take the fight to Australia and all that stuff. Because that's look, that's what the UFC has already talked about. So it's not like this was something that was a surprise. But they're following that game plan. They're following the blueprint of what the UFC wants to do. I thought bringing you know, Alexander Volkanovsky up there is great. He said the right thing. You're going to put your title, that lightweight title, on the line. I'll put my pound for pound on the line. They're already selling. It's a great fight. I would love to see it. And, you know, where, whether it happens in Australia or somewhere else, I don't care. That's a great fight as it's coming up. And if that's his first uh, defense, it's a hell of an opponent to go against.